for joining. Have any thoughts on anything that happens? And um, I think we'll start with the September 2001 minutes. Anybody have any? And Audrey, thank you so much for, for doing them. <laughs> Appreciate it. Well, I don't know. Let's see how many mistakes we find tonight. Well, I had one question, which is under new business, the second paragraph. It, Antonio made a motion, but there wasn't a second no, I, never, I had no notes on anybody ever making another motion about that. Maybe we neglected that. Okay. Because I didn't either, but I thought maybe I should start. Because <laughs> I remember you did that, didn't you, Marie? You used to make notes right. of that. Right. Yes, I should, do, I should do that too. Have a second thing. And I have two um, suggestions. What's that? Um, okay. First of all, Meredith's name was misspelled twice under director's report. She was, it was correct in oh, the people yeah. who attend, but it was uh, misspelled twice. Do to thank Debbie and Meredith for their time. It's bullet four and five under director's report. Yeah. I, okay. I missed that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And the next one is um, meet the candidates right. So there should be an S and a capital on M, C, and N because it's a special uh, event. And it should be candidates with an S. Yeah. Okay. And then the third one is under upcoming events. And I think we should put in Megan Aurelia and Marie Sturgis will help with set up and collecting tickets and money. Not Joe. Did you think of Joe Bulky? <laughs> no, I, I wrote that because at the meeting, that was what we discussed and that was what was said. That's oh, well, why I wrote it that way. We must have we must have talked about asking Joe. Oh for yeah, that. well yeah, we talked about Joe, but Joe is no longer on the board, and he was the one that did the tickets, Audrey. So, okay. um, so I would so just I, change it to Megan Aurelia to identify her. Okay, and how do you spell her last name? Okay, A U R E L I A. A U R I E L I A. Uh, yeah, A U R E L I A. Yep. Okay. And Marie Sturgis will be. We collected money. We set up and collected. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I know you did that. <laughs> okay, sir. All right. All right. <laughs> well, I, and I just don't want to compliment you, Audrey, on very thorough and specific notes. You do a great job. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I sure appreciate it because <laughs> I don't have to do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, one, the, the one thing I wondered. Um, Audrey, is if you wanted to put, you know, traditionally people sign it, you know, respectfully submit it or however you want to sign it, and then, and then with your name. And I, I think right. you should have your name on these. Okay. So as a, just a oh, you know, historical suggestion. record. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right, I will make those changes. Okay. Does anyone want to make a motion to accept the minutes with the changes? I make a motion to accept the minutes as uh, corrected. I second. Thank you. Does every everyone who agrees say aye? Aye. 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 Anybody disagree? Okay, it's passed. Okay, Judith, you're on. All right. Okay. Um, I'm hoping you can all see my screen right now. Is that um sound right? Yep. Okay, great. Um, so I'm just going to run through my slides here. Um, let start off with some programming. Uh, we had a virtual program about bone health. Um, there is a member of the community from New Baltimore uh, who is the, the sister-in-law of someone here. They can identify themselves if they wish, um, who did a program for us on uh, basically maintaining strong bones. Um, we had about 22 people come and the feedback was really positive. So I was very happy about that. Um, and we are continuing our weekly take and makes. Uh, my favorite from this past month was a take and make kit for pickles. Um, wow. We applied the pickling spices and then people provided the vegetable of their choice in the vinegar. Uh, a patron brought me some 
pickled squash, um, which I had never had before. Uh, it was very interesting. Um, wow. <laughs> so that was fun. Yeah. So those, uh, every Tuesday they go out, they continue to be really popular. Last week was mulling spices. Um, we did a tiny art kit the week before that. Um, so they're, they always go. Uh, Who's in charge of that? So it's on the li programming, li so basically the librarians meet once a month and we all say, I'm going to do this week or I have an idea for that. And we try every month to do something for adults, something that's kind of for teens and adults, and then one or two things that are more family or kind of elementary school aged. So we have a list of ideas and we just try to map them out in a way that kind of hits a diversity of interests and audiences over time. So there's not one person, it's a team effort. Uh, we showed an outside film, um, Fantastic Mr. Fox. Um, I'm going to plug this because it's just one of my favorite movies. If people have not seen it, it is, well, in a word, fantastic. Uh, <laughs> it's George Clooney and Meryl Streep uh, playing Mr. and Mrs. Fox. It's, of course, based on the Roald Dahl story, but the humor is very really grown up. So when I went, you know, at 7 o'clock on a Friday evening and saw a bunch of six, seven, eight-year-old boys, I was like, oh, we're doomed. Um, but they were really into it, so I was really happy. Um, we had, I think, 12 or 13 people come, so that was a good turnout for that. And it, it's a Wes Anderson film, right? It is a Wes Anderson film. So people know his yeah. ability. They're, it's kind of quirky and just funny. Uh, it's Great dollars. <laughs> and, of course, based on the book by Roald Dahl, um, which is just, I can't say enough good things about it. <laughs> um, we had... A workshop on ancestry. Um, the Upper Hudson Library System has a contract with Ancestry.com, has had one for a while. It used to be pre-COVID that people could only access Ancestry from the library. But, you know, a year and a half ago, Ancestry made a concession that people could log in from home with their library card. Um, so we periodically just do intro sessions. We had, you know, a few people attend. But I looked at our statistics. You know, we have pretty robust use. Um, we had 55, I don't know if they were unique people, but 55 sessions um, in August, so it's been 40 or 50 every month, which is really nice to see. It's wow. Really interesting in that kind of local history genealogy in the community. Um, this In September, every Saturday, we've done a drop-in activity. Um, whether it was we did perler beads one Saturday, friendship bracelets, um, this past Saturday, they made little pick and mix for little Christmas ornaments that are empty spools with fabric wrapped around them and beads. Um, the idea is it's in library programming, but it's very low density because people can come in anytime during the day, um, get wow. some kind of casual instruction from staff, like, you know, this, this is how you're going to get started, and they can ask questions if needed, but it's basically they're running it themselves. Um, so we're hoping to continue that. Um, this is last Friday. People probably know that October is fire safety month. Um, this is the Ravina Fire Department showed up and did a fire safety, um, showed their gear to the kids, that the kids explore the fire trucks. Um, so, you know, you can't go wrong with that. Um, we had Donna Hamilton brought back her felting class. Folks may remember she used to do this for us at a high degree of regularity. We hadn't done it in a year and a half, um, so we offered another one. We had 12 spots. It filled up mm. it really well because people often signed up with, with a friend or with a household member. Um, so we kind of put people who came together at a table together, um, and it was really nice to have that kind of degree of normalcy. Um, yeah. You say Donna Hamilton? Donna Hamilton, yeah. Yep, she's a, for those, if anyone knows her, um, you know, tell her we appreciate her. She's really fantastic, really good to work with. Um, we have brought back our art displays in the lobby space. Honestly, we could have done this a while ago. I just hadn't gotten to it. Um, so this is Anne Avery Ecker. I'm going to murder her last name, um, but she's a Selkirk resident, I believe. Um, she used to be the director of the Boston Spa Round Lake Public Library. Um, oh. and she was signed up to display art here spring of 2020. So I called her wow. back in the beginning of September, I think, and said, your name is on my list. Would you like to do it? And she said, yes. So um, we'll be oh. back to our every two-month rotation. Um, so if anyone What's her name? Who wants to display, um, let me know. What was her name? 
And I'll email you her name because it's like Aberly. Okay. Aberly. Uh, I don't have it in front of me, and it's All right. not coming to mind. Let me make a note of that. Yeah. Email, email, and to Audrey. Okay. To do oh, uh, so this is kind of follow up on the summer program. The books came in for our young writers. Um, we had eight kids successfully complete their books. Um, here's two of their photos. Um, this is Logan, and he wrote Tales of the Dirty Prison Sock, which is absolutely the story that you think a nine year old boy would write. Uh, this is Jack, uh, he wrote The Wings. Wings of the North, which is a, it was very elaborate um, dragon fantasy story. Um, I, I'm very impressed with what he came up with. Um, no dirty socks or prisons. Um, but all the stories are great. Uh, they're always a lot of fun to read. You said they just came in, were they sent out to be binded or? Yeah, so we use um, uh, independent publishing service. Uh, so the kids finished them up in mid August. And Brendan does the work to take the Google Docs and the images that kids submit and get it formatted for the publisher. Um, and then it takes a couple of weeks for them to get printed and sent to us. So yeah. Nice. It's, yeah. Um, and they look, you know, well, they look independently published, but they look professionally published. Um, so it's for the kids, I think it's, it's pretty gratifying um, to see their, their ISBN number and all that. It's all official. Um, you can find <laughs> the books on Amazon. <laughs> Oh, wow. Um, so this Upper, oops, see, I went backwards. Upper Hudson um, created a new report for us. And it shows the number of unique borrowers in the building. Um, and so basically, say Lori Dickerson came in you know, every Thursday and borrowed 50 books. Um, she would only be counted once in the time period. So it's this number here is uh, 1,430 unique individuals were in to check out books in this time period. And then on the right hand side here, it's 804 unique individuals came in during a certain time period to check out books. Um, so you can see that all the libraries have taken a big hit in terms of what, what percentage of um, their old foot traffic patterns they're seeing. And, and it's not the whole picture because it doesn't capture people who come in for programs. It doesn't capture people who come in to use the computers, to use a fax, copier with the newspaper or anything. It's only people who are physically checking out books because that's the, really the only thing that we can identify for sure. Um, but um, it's not, you know, the numbers are, I was surprised by how low they were. Um, it's just over half of the numbers have really recovered here. Uh, it wasn't intentional on my part. There were a couple libraries that were, I think two of the libraries I looked at, Bethlehem and Altamont um, had higher percentages, but they none of them were really above 60. Um, it's just like that was too big for this slide. Um, and I chose the libraries because they're all kind of mid-sized, except for the all the public branches and the branches by my house, so I was curious. Um, so you can see East Greenbush, Warriorsville, and Rensselaer are all kind of comparable size in terms of the population served. Um, so it was kind of an eye-opening snapshot for me. Mm. Um, this is something that was interesting. I emailed Lori about it at the time in case something came of it, and nothing has come of it. We had an individual come to the library they were initially turned away because they refused to wear a mask. Um, but then they came back and said that they were calling the FBI because we had symbols for pedophiles outside the library. Um, so, you know, staff said, OK, you know, you're free to call the FBI, um, to kind of thinking that nothing would come of it. But the, a few minutes later, the Queemans police showed up. Um, oh. and I give them a lot of credit because uh, I felt like they dealt with the individual well. They kind of heard him out and I uh, had a conversation about how, you know, these swirls here are just decorative swirls and not symbols for pedophiles. Um, and this man's kind of worldview fell apart a little bit um, because he was quite confident that we had a basement in which uh, illicit activity was taking place. 
but oh, no. slap. So um, when that was pointed out to him, he got a little flustered. Um, so it was more of a head scratcher than anything else. And I think the man was some combination of just deep in conspiracy theories and mentally ill. Um, and we haven't seen him since. Um, so it doesn't, I don't think anything's going to become of it, but I thought I'd just mention it to you all so you're aware. Um, I'm, I'm, a little, I'm a little concerned mm -hmm. um, because um, not, not with the squirrels or anything like that, but with the person and his allegations because that's a com that's been a common allegation against about a restaurant in DC. The pizza um, place, yes, he mentioned right, a pizza, pizza restaurant called Comet or whatever I forget the name of it. And, Comet, I think. And, yeah. yeah, and um, and so they have had individuals to come to that restaurant. One individual came with a gun mm -hmm. and helped uh, to try to um, uh, to see it to investigate. Of course, the individual eventually was was arrested. Um, and he had, you know. So that's why I'm, I'm concerned. That's all. Um, I guess we're gonna keep stay on our guards because we don't. I I, I just I, I, was this guy mentally ill or? Well, he's someone who is known to us um, from pre-COVID. Um, Clemens, the police officer, knew him, uh, and neither you know he wasn't belligerent. Um, I did okay. ask the officer to file. I don't know if it would be a police report, but to you know open a case on it um, in case there were a recurrence that so we would have documentation documentation from the beginning. Um, I have to trust that the officers kind of have a good sense of who is and isn't a threat in the community. Right. Uh, but you certainly made a valid point. Um, and when I kind of emailed staff about it, I did mention the whole Pizzagate thing and just to give them the context of where this conspiracy theory comes from. Right. Right. Exactly. Okay. All right. I just wanted to, I just, I guess we just got to be vigilant. You know, you, you can't be paranoid. <laughs> But just, just be vigilant. So thank you for letting us know. You're thank right. you for letting us know. Sure. Um, okay. Um, so if anyone was at the library this weekend, the library exterior is probably cleaner now than it's ever been before. Um, I had a little bit of project creep. Uh, I'm sure people have noticed that the sills on the, the McConnell Avenue door and the windows that are next to the door, they're always dirty. Like I had staff go out there like every other week with like bleach and scrub them. But between like the throughway pollution um, and main Main Street, the truck traffic, um, and they were just kind of gross because uh, they were white and had a dozen years of just stains. But I just we couldn't get them clean. Um, so one of my list projects was to have uh, this is Pete um, Consul. He's been doing small jobs for us for a number of years. I asked him if he would come in and just paint the trim, um, and he said yes. Um, he also he was washing the transom window that's over the McConnell Avenue door. And he's like, well, I, you know, I'm washing this, I'm cleaning it, and I can paint it. But just so you know, the building is so dirty that as soon as I paint it, it's, you know, there's just going to be dirt in the paint, and it's not going to look good. I have a power washer. Do you want me to go get it? So I said, sure. Um, and then there's a phenomenon where once you clean one thing, the thing next to it looks really dirty. So you know, it cost us a hundred bucks or something like that. <laughs> and who was it? Who did that? Pete Consul, K O N S U L. Uh, he's, I think, he lives in Koksaki. Um, he's been, you know, fixing things for us for a bunch of years. He's really good to work with. Um, and did he get the painting done too? He did. Yeah. Yep. And he um, put. On the public bathroom door, he put a handle on the exterior door so if people don't want anyone else coming in when they're in the bathroom, it says vacant or not, you know, occupied or vacant. Um, so hey. I have a little list for Pete every time, every time the something breaks. <laughs> and when I get like three or four things, I'm like, Pete, can you come by? Um, so he's a really great resource for us. Great. Um, this is just a bunch of fairly mundane things that definitely did not would not make good images. Um, every year we have to certify our payroll to Albany County Civil Service, um, and that's their way of making sure that the people who are working at the library are the people that civil service think should be working at the library. So got that done. Um, submitted a bunch of bureaucratic paperwork to New York State to get the final 10% payments on two construction grants. Um, we have a part-time opening. I think folks know that we're losing Brendan two evenings a week. Um, I was initially nervous that we'd get enough applicants, 
So as soon as I got a viable applicant, I scheduled them for an interview. Um, I ended up scheduling nine people, which was way too many. We had 19 applicants. Um, uh -huh. so Fabulous. It, it was a good problem. <laughs> but yeah. I, kind of run, yeah. I was running yeah. out a little bit last week. Um, <laughs> And um, we found evidence of a mouse. So I think I spelled evidence wrong. Um, we got we. I went to the hardware store with a heavy heart and bought a mouse trap, um, and we caught one, and that seemed to have solved the problem. So that, uh, any questions about any of that? Nope. Okay. Great. Thank you. Welcome. Let me get back here. Do, do, do. Okay, so I think statistics are next. You should all have the um, September stats. It wasn't a particularly good month for circulation. Um, things were a bit down, more or less, across the board, except, of course, for digital content. Um, I don't really have any theories as to why that's the case. Um, the, the, the kids' nonfiction was really the biggest and most striking jump down. I, I don't know why that is, except that a lot of time, a lot of the differences um, come from the loaned to category, which are books we're shipping out to other libraries. Um, so I don't know if it's something in the software that we're just the requests aren't getting sent to us to fill, or if borrowers from other libraries just aren't requesting as many books. Uh, but you can see that the, there's about 300 fewer books that went out to other libraries. That's that loaned two column, which is the third and the sixth column of numbers. Um, so I just thought it was interesting that that difference was about the same as our overall drop in CERC. Um, so there's that. Any questions about any of that? Um, on the funny, out of the ordinary thing in September was, and this shows you the pace at which the New York State moves things. Remember how, like, I think it was three years ago, we put solar panels on the roof? We sure. got a final payment for that <laughs> in September. Wow. <laughs> yeah, oh. that's $8,730 in grants. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. I had to, like, look up the project number because I had no idea what it was for because <laughs> it was so long ago. <laughs> Uh, but everything else is pretty normal. Um, I have a question. Um, has RCS reported out a delay in processing their tax receipts? Does anyone know? Okay, it's good that you don't, because if, if they did, you'd probably know. I know a bunch of districts in the area, the vendor they use to just process the tax payments is short-staffed and is really behind. So people's Taxes haven't been being, you know, your tax checks haven't been deposited. Um, so it sounds like RCS isn't affected by that, which is good because I was a little worried because if that were the case, we might have had a hard time getting our payment on time. Um, so they haven't heard anything about it, but great. I'm no expert on that. Yeah, well, yeah but now, you talk, now that you mention it, I mean, I haven't gotten a receipt from the bank saying they paid my school taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, normally a district would let residents know because people, you know, say they were due on October 1st. People get concerned, like, why hasn't my check been cashed yet? So the district, right. you would think, would push something out saying, don't worry, as long as it was postmarked on time, you're fine. Um, I, can, I've, I can certainly reach out to the business office and find out. Um, I just want you to know. Um, well, we just pay with a bank check, so we don't. So it's like, whatever you want to cash it, you can cash it. Take your time. That's all I have to do. No, us, us too. <laughs> Um, so nothing else out of the ordinary on the money, unless anyone has any questions. Yeah, I got one question, okay. and that is, I know we used to have to initial that we review. Um, that's next. Who, okay. yeah, that's next on All the right. agenda, Anton. All right, okay. <laughs> um, so we just jump to that, Lori? In, if, you're, if you're ready to, ready. sure. Yeah, sure. Okay, um, sure. So I have both the September and... The August, August um, transaction details uh, because we forget, it, we forgot to put it on the agenda last month and it was in the packet but we forgot to approve it because um, you know that's why we have an agenda. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Nope, nope, that's nope. on me uh, and on me because Lori and I do it together. Um, if you may have noticed that one of the dates is processed differently, and that's because. I don't know if Lori didn't print it out or I couldn't find it, but on Friday, I'm like, where's the page that goes with these checks? 
Um, so I had to go into QuickBooks and print it out. And I know enough about QuickBooks to kind of sort of muddle my way through. But obviously the way Lori does it is better. Um, but so you can tell when it's me because it's like, what is this? Uh, so it has the same information, just the formatting is different. Um, so what we, I think, to kind of answer your question, Antonio, uh, I think there will be a motion to approve the transaction reports probably for both months. And then Lori, myself, and whoever the trustee that signs the checks will all initial it when we send them out. Okay. Okay. Did we indicate the exact dates? Um, it's 814, 827, 95, 913, 922, uh, and 10, 1 through 8. I'll do it, uh, Audrey, I'll do it again. Thank you. Sure. I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> These are the specific dates of the reports. And I think oh, no, 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 814, yeah. 814, 827. Okay. 9, 5. Yep. 9, 13. Okay. 9, 22. Okay. And 10, 1 through 8. All right. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks, Marie. So... So I guess that will satisfy the auditors because um, it started with the auditors saying that we needed to yeah. sign off on this a long time ago. So that was the, if that satisfies the auditors, I'm fine with it. Um, okay. I believe it was the auditors that stated we should do this. I think it was. Um, yes. Controller. Yeah, right. Exactly. Okay. Would anybody like to make that motion uh, regarding the dates that Marie has indicated? Well, since I brought it up, I'll make the Thank motion you. that we accept, <laughs> that we accept the, um, second it. Okay. <laughs> the transaction report summaries. <laughs> okay. And and you got the dates, Audrey? Um, 814, 827, 95, 913, 922, and 10, 1 through 8. Thank you so much. Great. Okay, we can go down to our next item, which is new business. Oh, wait a minute. We, we got to go back and say, does that, everyone who agrees say aye? Aye. 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 Anybody aye. disagree? Okay, it's passed. All right, now we can go to new business and reopening adjustments. Okay. Um, and so. Probably the thing that's going to shift in outside story time. Um, we're already hearing that it's a little chilly. Uh, I know that we talked about inside programming. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <Whoa. Yeah. laughs> we talked about. Not a lot. Yeah, it's good. Um, we talked about inside programs um, with a cap of twelve people in the larger room and five people in the smaller room, but we didn't talk specifically about um, story time, which of course involved young children. I don't know if there's a desire to do anything differently there or just to kind of follow the same general principle that we've been um, following. Can you remind me of the number of kids and parents who generally show up for story time? It can vary wildly. I mean, I would say, you know, pre when they were last time they were inside the library, we could easily have 20, 25 kids. Um, if I like, get a romp and read. Um, but in terms of the outside ones, we've probably been having, I, I would say, I think we've hit our 10 family cap. We've never surpassed it. Uh, and I suspect that some of them, some of that might fall off when we move inside. So are you going to put a family, are you going to put a cap on the inside story time? So you don't okay. have the 25 Definitely. show up. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Um, so what if what if we have a sign up for a story time for we do okay so with could we side, have 10 families can sign up um and we've actually been really lucky we've had a number of story times where we have 10 families sign up but then no one goes on the wait list so that's been a really it, it fits well and you know there's plenty of room under that tent for 10 families outside um so we've been lucky in that the number of people we thought was appropriate closely matched to the number of people who wanted to come um, so the question is, how do we play with that when we move it inside? But can can we keep it the way it is and zoom it for people who who don't make the cutoff? So we certainly could. Um, I think it's tough. I would say we probably have to do the zoom separately. 
Uh, I think that, I mean, I I think, Laura, you, like, you probably know the most about working with small children, but I can't imagine trying to, like, do a story time for kids who are in the room and, you know, walking around and showing them the stories and trying also to be on camera at the same time. Uh, so I think what we do is just have the presenter do a second session on Zoom. Yeah, and that the, makes sense. The perks of this is interactive with the kids. It's really, I always enjoyed kind of just, you know, running the Zoom session, um, watching the kids really be digital natives and feel very live little. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I, in my mind, that is definitely a part of the solution. So I would say maybe do like six families inside, but then also offer like a Zoom session. And then we'd have two story times a week too. So six families okay. per story time. So it's 12 families. Yeah. So yeah. And then maybe, maybe keep the Zoom option to if you get really higher numbers of interest, mm -hmm. then maybe offer the Zoom. Yeah. Wow. So or another another indoor session, would that be? Right. So we, I mean, that's another thing. We, we may need to tweak this as well. Um, we've traditionally done like a romp and read, which is supposed to be kind of like the toddler age story time and then a preschool story time, which involves a craft. It is targeted at older children. Um, one's on third. Okay, so pre-COVID, we did three a week. We did romp and reads on Tuesdays and Fridays and preschool story time on Thursdays. Um, basically, universal pre-K has really kind of taken the audience for that preschool story time. So the kids who show up tend to be younger and Thursdays just work better for them, which is totally fine. Uh, but that story time is usually smaller um, just because the kids who are available to go to story time tend to be younger. So we could, I mean, I would love to have the problem of needing to add back that third session. And we certainly could. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so what, what would you, would you like a motion for how we're going to deal with the numbers or just a general agreement? We need a motion because we don't, I mean, we right. We're not really, it doesn't sound like there's a big push to change anything, but we kind of have to look at the numbers of people who sign up to see right. if we need a plan B and a plan C. Yeah, right. We said 12 people. I mean, you may well, have, I mean, my, my thought, if you have six people, six adults sign up, they may bring two kids, but the adult and their two or three kids would sit next to each other. So you'd have six little groups of people in that room. Yeah. So you may yeah. have more than 12, but. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, well, you have to use your discretion because this is it's just new territory and there's not much we can do. I, I think we, we just wanna, start out the way it's, it is right. sorted now and we have to make adjustments if it doesn't work. We have to right. make a different plan if it doesn't work. But right. That sounds good. So it sounds yeah, and, good. Yeah, I know you're trying to keep everyone okay, so what are we doing? Safe, so. Okay, so this is what we're doing. Um, <laughs> we are going to offer our, we're going to start off offering our preschool and toddler story times with a max of six families per session. Um, if there is demand, we will add a third session each week and or um, add a Zoom session. Um, and that actually kind of feeds in a little bit to the annual survey, which we'll talk about in a minute, um, because we're still kind of trying to get a handle on to what I school programming. Um, aside from story time, I think the only other thing that really warrants discussion right now is um, we. I met with a fourth grade teacher from Peter B um, a couple days ago, and he wants to bring his class over. Um, that's going to blow our number of people in the building a little bit out of the water. Um, and I'm going to suggest we remove that. Um, I just. I think that the, the only time it's going to be effective is when we have something like a class of fourth graders come in. Um, there's never like 30 patrons who are just randomly in the library borrowing books at the same time these days. Um, so I would say it's a hindrance um, and it's only really applicable, you know, less than 5% of the time. Does that make sense? So you're yes. suggesting to invite the class? And remove the attendance cap. Move, remove the attendance cap, yeah. 
just just for this class to come. Yeah, or for anything, if a different class wants to come, or you know, it, it really kind of let stop you from doing anything that's a partnership with a school, um, because there's more kids in a class than is our headcount, um, and w with the exception of unusual events like a class visit, the traffic flow is not a problem at all. I I I I have no issues with it because. Number one, I do know that the elementary schools do not have libraries, librarians, yep. and we have been an asset to the school district. So I have no, no concerns at all about it because I know that the, uh, the school district is going to try to make sure the kids are safe and uh, going to wear their mask and all this stuff and, and, the other, and whatever else that needs to be required. So I have no issues with it personally. I, I would like to support the schools be, in terms of exactly what you said. They're not being a library anymore at at either of the schools, I think it's important that we help fill the gap there. I agree. I agree. I agree. Okay. Do we need a motion for that to remove the cap for special events for the schools? Did you, what do you think, Marie? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Just a session. Yep. Okay. Anything else about any of that? All right, I'm going to click over to the survey. Let me find that. Here it is. Share my screen. Uh, share screen. Survey. Okay, so this is still, it's not quite finished. I need to work on the layout a little bit, um, but it's close enough. Um, and so it's short because I feel like short surveys increase the likelihood of people actually fulfilling them. Um, and I love books, donated a $20 gift card. So that's going to be the, the incentive, um, which is very nice of them. They're lovely. Um, so one of the things I wanted to get at was, should we, re oh, you know, how much demand is there for evening hours? Um, and I felt like if you say, should the library be open in the evening? People would say yes. Um, just because that's how human, you know, people always like, oh, yes, more, that would be good. Uh, so I thought a better way of getting at that would for people to choose the top three times they're likely to use the library. And I also threw Sunday afternoon in there just, just to see. Um, we talk about this from time to time. I don't, I don't oh. know what's happening this year. Um, but, I, I, you know, just to see. Um, so there was that. Um, so we ask two versions of this question. So for adults, we offer in person and online. What do you prefer? And then the same thing for kids. This is out of order. I need to fix that. You know, for kids, do you prefer in person or online or no preference? Um, how do you find out about what's happening at the library? You know, which of these things are you using? Um, how are you comfortable visiting the library? And initially, I was like, you know, I feel like most people are comfortable. But then I saw those statistics about only, what was it, 56% of our unique users are back in the library. Um, I was like, oh, we definitely do want to ask this to see you know, how quick, how close is this to the reality of our statistics. And then we always ask on scale of one to five, how happy are you with the library? And then kind of the free form, you know, tell us what you want to tell us kind of question. Um, so that, that's it, all of six questions. Um, so I don't know if there's anything else people would like to see or if folks have any feedback. What was the name of the place that donated the gift card? I love books. I love books. Yeah, they're up in Del Mar. Hey, by five you, hours. you spelled it wrong. Oh. You, you put, I loved books. Oh, oh that's bad, because I still do. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> I capitalized, too. I love books. <laughs> I like the way that you broke down the uh, times they'd like to come to the library. I think, like yeah. you said, they're just going to say, yeah, I want to come to the library. Yeah. But you've broken it down to the three different, or whatever, mornings, afternoons, evenings. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what people say. Yeah, I think that's going to get to some critical pieces of information. And I I like the, the questions, and hopefully it'll give us something to work with. There you go. I, I like them. I, I like them because it's quick and... Mm -hmm. It gives gives us the information we, we we're trying to determine to um to to assess. So I, I like it. I have um I think the questions are pretty sufficient. And and I mean there is a section that's an open agenda type uh, section 
where you can write any of your thoughts on anything else you think the library should do. So I think it's good. Plus, you can tell it easier, can't you? <laughs> yeah. When are, when are you sending out the survey? Probably in a week or two, as soon as I get around to like okay. making it pretty and typo free. <laughs> Hopefully. Okay. <laughs> Uh, um, okay. Um, next okay. is the policy. Laura, you want to? Yeah, so we got the library use, health and safety. So um, do you feel like we need to change anything with that, Judith? Or do you want to discuss the um, situation with vaccination? Okay, so there's two separate issues, right? The, um, yeah. So do you want to do the policy and then? Yes. Yeah. So the policy, uh, are we talking, I'm trying to remember what this one is about. Is this one, is this one the bed bug issue? Yes. Yeah. It's about the health issues and uh, oh, yeah. so we need the library the safe and the patrons safe and the people who are working yeah. are safe. Um, has everybody reviewed the the policy that Judith sent? Uh, does anybody have any comments on it? I, I thought it, it hit all the poignant uh, poignant points that we need to uh, <laughs> consider with that. With the, Can I that, just ask how are we determining um, that a patron is not being healthy and safe to? your materials and, and the building and stuff. Well, I would say if we can't tell, then it can't be too bad. Okay. Like, you know, if books are coming back, I mean, obviously the bed bugs are what precipitated it, but I would say like, obvious bodily, bodily fluids or, you know, I, I think it would have to rise to the level of like, look at this, you know, we clearly have a problem here. Right. And um, at, the, at the end of the policy where it says, um, something about, I didn't print it out in front of me, but the patron needs to show that they're, they've been taken remediation. Mm -hmm. So I would assume that would be like, you know, they'd show that they've had organ com or something like they would so show a like receipt. That, I mean, we, we may well be willing to, I would say I would take an oral um, assurance first. And, you know, if there were a recurring thing, then we'd probably ask for a paper. You know, we certainly don't want to stigmatize anyone. It's kind of walking that fine line about... Yeah having our books not be gross and making people feel welcome in the library. It's a little bit of a balancing act. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the way you worded it, it's, I, I'm willing, I think it's a good, a good, uh, a good one to put in place. Oh, I've got to give credit to the Bethlehem library. Um, this is liberally adapted from theirs. <laughs> <laughs> And that's okay. Why reinvent the wheel when you don't need to? Exactly. <laughs> Where so would we you be posting this? We don't need to be more specific. Okay, so to Audrey's question, it'll be on our website and then in our policy manual. Um, and, you know, honestly, the way I look at policies is there's something that are there if you need them. Um, and I think most policies you hope to never need. Um, right. You want to be able to fall back on them if something arises. And then Debbie, your question, no, that was your question. And then Trisha, you had a question? Audrey wondered, oh, sorry. Audrey. Be more specific. Um, can you give me an example of what you mean, Audrey? Well, I didn't know if we need in the policy about, you know, books coming back damaged or, you know, with some type of bodily fluids on it or bed uh, bugs or, you know, like, you know, like, because I, <laughs> I think we need to keep it open ended because you just never know. <laughs> right. But I just, you know, I didn't know if there was a term. Well, I think I mean, what I hope would cover that is protect library collections. Like if you're damaging, the, if okay. this is an issue that is harmful to the material the library owns. Okay. You put the ooh factor, you know, the <laughs> ooh gross. Yeah. Do we need to wear rubber gloves while touching it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm going to ask this after we vote on it about something, but I'm going to wait until we vote. Until we... Okay. Um, so does would, does anybody have any more comments about the the library use policy? If not, would somebody make a motion that we adopt the uh, policy as written in the past? I make a motion we adopt it. 
Second. Second. Okay. Oh, go ahead, Debbie. Debbie, second. Okay. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anybody aye. opposed? I just wanted to ask a question about the handling of the books. Are staff using gloves to handle the books and are they sanitizing them or spraying them or something? Um, are you about I think books that are affected by things like this or books in general? Books in general. No. Uh, we are no longer quarantining books. Um, we stopped doing that. Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not saying quarantining. I'm saying just the handling of the books when you get them from the, from the, um, um, when they're being sent back, uh, mm -hmm. when you get them from the book storage, mm -hmm. the drop off, mm -hmm. are you um, like um, using gloves or anything or, or no, spraying them or something? No, we're not spraying not, them because okay. it would be hard to find a spray that didn't harm the books. Um, there were yeah. some staff members back when there was concern about like fomite transmission of COVID that wore gloves, but I, I'm pretty sure at this point no one's wearing gloves. I mean, we have gloves available, okay. but no one uses them. Okay. All right. I was just because of this issue with. Um, bed bugs or certain things i just felt like well let me ask the question but i didn't want us to get on a rabbit trail first i want us to handle this before we start talking about that now antonio you may have me wearing gloves tomorrow though what's that you may have me wearing gloves tomorrow <laughs> you know maybe if they saw something they might put gloves on that might be an indication yeah yeah. yeah. They're, 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 you know, if you see something you put gloves on you, you put it in a bag you seal the bag yeah. you put it in the freezer um, yeah. Right, right. I wouldn't have thought of the freezer, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We need to so move on. Everybody was okay with that. With I'm, that, I'm okay. Okay. Um. And I, you know what? I'm really sorry, but I can't remember what. Did we cover that whole item, or is there another safety issue? All right. So you, I, your other part you asked about was the vaccinations. Lori, you had asked about that. I didn't know. Is that part of this? I didn't think it was, but. Um, I, are, what do you think, Judith? Are we, well, are we good with our. Under um, reopening adjustments, and I can speak to it generally. Um, so October 1st was the deadline for people to submit um, proof of at least one vaccination. Um, I would say the vast majority of the staff did. Um, staff that didn't um, had to submit a negative PCR test. Um, we did have an issue with someone scheduling their test on time. Um, so the results came in um, later than they needed to be in. But I think that's just a kind of a hiccup that's going to get worked out as uh, people become aware of just kind of what kind of time frame you need to work here. Okay. Um, and are you comfortable going to the next item meeting determination? Okay. So we need to just decide whether we're ready to go back and meet in person, or should we keep our meetings as a Zoom, uh, in a Zoom format? Um, I vote for in person. I vote for in person. Okay. Not that we're voting, but I, my, I, I would like to you know, hear that. Yes. I didn't mean to say voting, well, but I hate Zoom. I, I just have such a hard time with this whole platform. <laughs> Um, okay, I like so Zoom, yeah. but you like Zoom too. I like Zoom. So we've got one. To be honest, I do like Zoom because I don't have to go anywhere. I can do three meetings in one. one <laughs> that's that's my thing too. Yeah, but I'm open. I mean, I'm, I am I, open. Yeah, if the group decides Zoom, I certainly, of course, I will do it. I, I too, Audrey, like to see people in person. Um, I mean, I, I think where I, I guess I where I'm at is I'd like to hear what everybody thinks and we'll keep a tally and see you know <laughs> see which one more people would like to to move to. Um, so let's see, Audrey, you want in person? Trisha wants in person. Meredith, we don't know. Do you have an opinion, Marie? Yes, I'd like to continue with Zoom. Okay. Um, uh, so Meredith's not here. So I'm the I'm the <laughs> I'm the last one, and I guess I um. Antonio I either I'm not, way. I'm not quite ready to go back in person. I am going to lean on the Zoom side. I'm I'm. I'm I okay apologize so. to Audrey and Tricia. No, I mean I like I, I said. That's why. Yeah. What may I? Uh, is it just because you don't want to go out and drive no. to places, or because in church, those places don't they? more convenient. 
It's, it's really it's more convenient. It is a little more convenient. I do prefer being in person, but even at church, I'm going to the parking lot. I'm not going inside yet. And I guess it's a, it's, uh, I guess it's because I, I'm out in the world every day. Mm hmm. And so you know, I'm still, it's I'm still home not. now, and you, you're, we're seeing you. So, <laughs> um, so now you're home. Well, that gives you a, a chance to relax a little bit and drink your water. <laughs> I think I don't think I think we're just going to do this uh, every month, and you know, e every month we'll decide for the next month, and. I don't know if it's a if it's a thought to alternate if we have basically six of one, half a dozen of the others. Um, I don't know. The, two, the two church groups that I'm in from my church, we you know we're we're face to face. Yeah, and mine aren't. See, I was supposed to teach at church and they canceled because they came down with COVID and they closed the church offices down. And even my vet closed down for four days because of COVID. The oh. last two weeks, so. Um, cause my cat was sick and I couldn't get him in. Um, and that's just within the last two weeks. So I suppose like it's where you're at. It's so definitely a very personal decision. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm in a way. I, I, yeah. I mean, I, 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 we do have, we've had, in, we've been meeting as a congregation since uh, August a year ago. Uh, we do a lot of things in there. We don't have full we uh we don't allow full capacity but um so we've gone back to wearing masks because yeah. uh, COVID spread but we still meet so uh, you know and i with to me with zoom zoom is just it's a convenience for me because yeah you know because i can uh, sometimes i might have three meetings <laughs> so in one night not tonight but i have had three meetings in one night and it's, it's just a convenience for me um so i, I can go either way and um, so I'll just go with Zoom for now until everyone feels comfortable. And either way, I guess I'm a swing voter. So either way, when people feel comfortable, I say, okay, let's go. I'm in for going in. So, yeah. Judith, do you have any comments? I'm happy to show up anywhere. Okay, thank you. Um, well, without knowing what Meredith wants, it looks like right now there's four for Zoom and two for in person. So for next month, I guess I would suggest that we do Zoom and um maybe then the following month we'll be more comfortable and we can move to in person audrey you and i can go down and meet the love <laughs> you know what i just live my life <laughs> i'm sorry yeah, I, had to well, that in. Yeah. I mean i'm out a lot in the community also every day i haven't really even for the past two years i've had to be out because i work with people with disabilities so um they can't take care of themselves and as an administrator i have to make sure they're well staffed so, so I've done, you know, so I understand that, but it's like, I feel like, um, I like the convenience at this point with Zoom, I got, I've gotten spoiled with it, so many different things, so. Well, for next month, we'll try Zoom and, and we'll see if anybody feels any differently next time. Thank you. And we'll get Meredith to vote, you yeah. know. Thank there you. Go. I think we can move to old business and the first Wait, one. Sorry, Lori, I, I have new business I need to kind of interrupt with you shortly. Um, I did the trustee training on Tuesday night, and I would like you to add to your agenda over the next few months. Um, over the 14 standards that we have, there's two that we have not addressed. Um, we need to review and reapprove our bylaws and our policies because we have not done them in years. So if you could add those to our agenda so we could come up to the standards over whatever month you want to put them in, that would be great. Other than that, we are doing great. Okay. Well, thank you for the suggestion. We'll, we'll try to figure out a way to, to um, put those in, the, in the, so we can go ahead and, do, and, and review and reapprove them. Thank you. And thanks for going to the in-service. You're welcome. It was fun. Oh, good. Um, okay, so if we go to old business, we're going to be talking about the barbecue results, which I thought it was a lovely interaction between the library and the public as usual. Thanks, everybody, for all your help. It was a really nice evening. Um, and I don't know if you want to 
say what, oh, I, I guess everybody knows that we made around $929 and I got no complaints. Like normally someone's like, oh, my chicken was too cold. Oh, my chicken was burnt. No one complained this year. <laughs> so. I thought it went really smoothly. So thanks everybody. And it, it was, it was really lovely. And that's a, that's a lot of money we made. That was great. Um, and, and does anybody have anything they want to say about the barbecue? I just want to thank everyone for their participation. It was everyone that I mean, all, all the trustees had a great time. Um, yeah, it was great. And everyone was in their appropriate space. I guess I was in the appropriate yeah. space to socialize with people and <laughs> keep them in line and that type of stuff. So, and thank you, Maria and Megan, for collecting the money and yeah, Judith for. Thanks to Megan for having me in. Yeah. yeah. That was so, the hard part. Yeah, for all of you, I think it was just a wonderful time. I, I think we all had a great time doing it and meeting the public too. Yeah, it was nice. And uh, ditto, thanks for the the staff luncheon. I really enjoyed it. I liked being in, out, outside with everybody, chatting with the staff, and the food was delicious. Thank you, Debbie, for organizing it and bringing all the yes. all the paperware and. Um, Everybody really outdid your, you, you outdid yourselves with delicious food. And I really, uh, really thought it was lovely. Thank you. Yeah, um, everyone on the staff was happy. They were full, the food was good. Um, and it's so important, I think, for all, you know, everyone to just know who everyone else is. I mean, it's such a basic thing. Um, it really makes that, awesome. Yeah, that was, that was great. Right, you have a, a number of new staff that I've never met. So it was kind of, it was very nice. Yeah. It was. And so thank you for the jackfruit. I don't who, who um, that was Debbie. Debbie. I did that. Thank you. It tasted it tasted just like pulled pork. It was amazing. Sure did. Yep, that was good. Uh, so upcoming, we have sweets with Santa, which last last month we decided we're going to do the same as we did last year with basically a, a Zoom Santa, prepackaged treats. Letters to Santa in an envelope in a box that um, volunteers will, you know, write responses to. Um, what did I forget? No, I think that's the thing. Uh, it's going to be on December fourth, uh, right? That's December fourth. We said December fourth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, Debbie dropped off some little boxes for the treats, uh, which are perfect. And I got to admit, I've done nothing on this, so <laughs> it's coming though. I'll get on it. Yeah. Well, I'll help whenever you need help. Yes, I will too. I'll help too. Thank you. I'll, it's, it's coming. Um, <laughs> and then and I'll buy I'll buy the candy again. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, I, I if you kind of make a list of if Judith, if you make a list of things that need to get done, then we you know we'll know. Yep. Thank you. Because like I don't know what you're all doing because it's new. So I will be in yeah. Need. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then I should have your number yeah, <laughs> and your email and your address. <laughs> oh, that's scary. <laughs> um, next Monday is Meet the Candidates Night. Um, we talked about last, week, last month, it was a little bit in limbo, but the library is proceeding. Um, Antonio Booth is going to be our moderator. Um, oh, so thank you, Antonio. Um, he's well known, he, he assures me that he is. On equal terms with both parties, um, and he does not live in Queens. <laughs> That's true, so but it, it is true. Um, I do know um, um, Bruno. I've had wonderful interactions with her. I know um, I know a number of the candidates on both sides because I've had to interact with the town supervisor on a number of occasions with different things, like even this summer with the youth going up to the park and stuff. So there are there, I do know a lot of them personally in on both sides in a strange way. <laughs> but, um, so, and, I, and I'll make sure I make that disclosure so people understand that um, that I do know both, uh, both a number of them on, uh, both, um, from both sides. Well, the issue, um, of course, is that the Clemens team is not participating. <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, everything we said, all the publicity says both all candidates have been invited, the A team accepted the invitation, the Clemens comeback team declined to participate. Um, we hope they change their mind. Um, which isn't going to happen, but I put it out there. Uh, maybe it will. Right. Oh. I'd, love to, I'd love to be wrong. Um, and so, is there going to be a, a diplomatic statement about? Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yes, yes. Um, so, 
there's a, I think I have about 12 people signed up. That includes a couple of the candidates. So probably about 10 people signed up. Um, you know what? I'm going to, I'll email everyone in the sign up link. So if you know people who are Queen's residents who are interested in the election and you could share that, that would be great. Link what time does it start? 7 p.m. next Monday. So same time slot. And it's a Zoom format. It is on Zoom. And the candidates, some of the candidates kind of preferred that too, because when we, I started working on this back in August, and we were thinking maybe we could be in person, um, but one of the two of the candidates said, oh, I'd rather it be virtual, um, so it worked out that way. Um, um, so, Judith, yep. you sign up because you want to attend it. When I read it today, it appeared as if if you have a question, then you should do such and such. So... Um, you can just sign up and just listen to it Absolutely. as opposed to having a question. Okay, so that's okay. So you can obviously sign up and ask a question or just sign up and attend. And people can okay. either email questions in advance um, or they can submit them during um, during the um, session. And Antonio, you and I need to talk this week about how we're going to manage this. Yes. I, some thoughts. I got the, um, the guidelines from the League of Women Voters. Um, so we'll okay. have to kind of use their format because uh, it's battle tested, um, even though there's not going to be any opposition. So I'm not expecting a contentious right. event. <laughs> and, I, and I think I probably need to have some, a few questions just in case there's a lull. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I have uh, questions prepared. Right. Good. That's good. Is there a Zoom link on the website if you just want to attend and just to listen? or? So the Zoom link is, so if you, our online calendar, if you sign up for the event, you get the Zoom link. I'm always hesitant to just publish Zoom links on the internet um, because that's how bad things happen on Zoom. Some you know bad actors will just Zoom on your Zoom. But the way okay. I need your email, you give me your email address, I'll give you the Zoom link is how it works basically. Okay. So sign up via the calendar. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think we can go to strategic plan review, and we're going to be talking about goal three, which is serve as a focal point for dissemination of community information for other organizations. Um, I think we might, we might start by brainstorming to see if anybody can think of something that already happens for getting information out to community information out to other organizations. So, but certainly, certainly the, <laughs> what we just talked about is, is certainly one. Um, a big one. I think that a big thing here is that there's often been a desire for a community calendar. Um, a couple of years ago, the library hosted one on our own. We had a hard time getting people to submit things to it. Um, so two or three, just before COVID, because you know it's all in the timing, we partnered with the News Herald, um, and we use a service called Burbio. And the great thing about Burbio is, once an organization hooks up their calendar to it, everything on that organization's calendar shows up on the Burbio calendar. Ah. Um, the Downside of that is people need to know how to connect calendars. Um, and when we rolled this out, we you know, sent out kind of detailed instructions and we sent out kind of an offer, you know, come to the library, we can talk you through it. Uh, and the school district uses it and the town of Bethlehem uses it. And you know, I'm gonna actually, I didn't pull this up in advance cause I didn't, um, I didn't think to, didn't think to do it. Um, but I'm gonna right now see if I can, just quickly show you guys how, and oh, someone just signed up for Meet the Candidates. That's great. <laughs> I opened up my email. Um, <laughs> da, da, da. What was I going to say here? Um, okay, so RCS. So it's currently on our website, and I think one of the challenges is making people aware of it and having it be utilized. Um, so go community events. Loading. Hmm. That's weird. Why is it not working? <laughs> okay, it's coming. Here it is. Okay, so let me share my screen. Um, share screen. Da, 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 da. Where did it go? So the News Herald hosts it on their website. 
but you can see that, so the school district uses it, the town of Bethlehem uses it, the library uses it. Um, it does make us look like the only game in town because <laughs> there's not a, other community organizations aren't using it. Um, so if people are part of um, different organizations, you see the Bethlehem Historical Association is using it. Um, if you're part of an organization that would like their events on a community calendar um, and you'd be willing to just, you know, mention that this exists or advocate for it, um, you can see here's the Meet the Candidates Forum and gives you the basic information about it. Um, I think it's a great concept. Um, the struggle is always with adaptation. Um, so any questions about this in specific? I don't have any questions. It just seems to me it's a perfect fit for goal three. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I know tonight, like, the, the fire company had an ice cream social, and they were saying the same thing. We used to use the News Herald has to, they had, like, a, I call it a free, I think, blue circle at that time, used to offer their community board. And tonight they were just saying that Facebook is really their only uh, way of uh, advertising. Um and, you know, that Facebook hits Facebook population. Another nice thing about this is so people in the community can subscribe. So you can say, okay, so I live in the 12143 area code, and I'm interested in events that are for kids, you know, for example. And that then you would get all the general interest things. You could also subscribe. To, I want the library's calendar and the school's calendar, and you get a weekly email with um, the organizations that are of interest to you. Uh, so it's a really nice solution, but with all things along this, these lines, it only works um, if the um, people participate. <laughs> There's no charge. And Judith and our electronic sign, are you going to have that advertised? <laughs> so that is a, something I was hoping we would discuss this evening. Um, we do sometimes share other organizations' posts on Facebook. Like, for example, over the weekend, we shared the VFW is um, sponsoring a breast cancer awareness walk this coming Saturday. So, you know, they asked us if we would share that. We said yes. Um, so I'm curious about the board's opinion on the electronic sign. On the one hand, um, we can. I usually have four images there at once. One of them is our hours, uh, and then the other... Two of them are programs, and then the third is kind of a general, like, promoting reading, promoting the library. Um, and part of me thinks it's a great service to make that space available to other organizations. Another part of me feels like we don't have enough space for what we want to promote now because people see an image when they drive by. Um, it may be a different image when they drive home. Um, so, yeah, there's pros and cons to everything. So what do people think? I think I don't. I think it's a great idea. I have no concerns about it. Uh, I just think you probably need a few got few guidelines related to what what organizations you want to um, to advertise. I mean, my church does a lot of stuff. So um, we have a community court access program um, that meets um, that uh, that's open on Fridays through the, so people can do uh, legal business well through the court system. So I mean, that's that's the only thing. I, other than that, I'm, I'm okay with it. I think it's a great idea because it's a small town and people want to know what's happening. So at least that might be a good way to get people to look at the library um, uh, board and say, oh, that's happening. So uh, I'm okay with it. But you don't want to show preference to certain people if you don't show theirs, but you show somebody else's. But what if you... Um, I mean, you have technology if you train some people in your group how to use this community calendar and you train people or you advertise that will show people how to use it. Yeah, I mean, that's what we did when we launched it. <laughs> we right. had no takers, but we could certainly give it another spin. Well, yeah. when I was in, sorry, in Go ahead. When, Go ahead. when I was in training, they told us some other libraries that they had the board go out and talk to three different people about a certain program or something that the director wanted us to talk about, and we spread the word of mouth, and we pushed it. 
you know, we could try pushing this for you to see if you had anybody take it. I don't know. Yeah, no, that, um, I'm happy to send you each a little cheat sheet. So if you're, I know you're all members of other organizations. Uh, you said, hey, you know, did you guys know there's a community calendar? It, it's a one-time setup thing to have all our events go on it. Because our old one, it was simpler, but you had to manually input every single event. Um, whereas now, right. if you sit down with someone in the library for 10 minutes, we can, you know, sync it, um, and all your events will show up on this calendar. Um, so there's so there's that issue, and then there's a separate issue of to what extent do we want other organizations' events on our digital sign outside the library? I was referring to the digital sign, and I, I, I have no issues with that. Um, I think it's great publicity. I mean, maybe once a week, you can say, well, we have once a week we can we can flash it for the day or whatever. You know, I, I don't know. This is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so we can do that. Um, can you, you know, but I, I think you're going to have to have a few guidelines, but because then you have to figure out well, what organizations we really want to do this, you know, because you, you can't do it for everyone. So that's the only thing. I like the VFW, I like them. I love those women. They're great people. They do a lot of great things for the veterans. Um, so I mean, I have no issues with them, with, with us flashing that on our board. Um, to support them and to encourage the community to be a part of it. So I think we should not use it for, you know, to say somebody's going to have a chicken barbecue or a roast right. any for, for financial gains. Um, but maybe we could have some, I just to throw out something, you just say first come first serve can have a, a piece of the sign. Have you had a lot of requests? Yeah. Okay. The, I mean, um, the Baker Kuksaki um, puts community events on their sign. They just got a digital sign. I think digital signs are, you know, the, the zoning in Ravina is quite permissive. Um, yeah. So I think Thank the, the fire departments are getting them. You know, the elementary school already has one. We have one. The village has one. The bank has one. I know the bank <laughs> has community events on their sign um, because they put our barbecue oh. on it, which is very nice of them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think it does use of that sign for, you know, to give space to other other organizations does fit in with the goal. So I, I'm for it as long as I wouldn't want to see it for people to, you know, organizations to make money, I don't think. But on the other hand, <laughs> the fire department needs money too. I don't know. Right. Right. Anybody else have any? Thoughts on use of the sign? Is anybody opposed to having us use a piece of the sign for another organization? I mean, as long as, you know, Judith, you're able to get what you want out for the library on the sign because, you know, you're saying that sometimes you know, you don't have enough room to put the things that you want to put up there. Yeah, it's really a um, resolution issue. I mean, there's, if it's like, for example, we have the paper bulletin boards in the library, we'll put any organization's event up there anytime. Um, right. Because people will stand there and scan, right? The way that digital sign works is different. You know, it's how many yeah. different images are you going to flash for eight seconds as people drive by right. and see one of them? Yeah. You know, and the other thing is, you know, if we're going to do it first come, first serve, um, you know, for organizations, I, I don't know if you can say we, can, we won't do it for this organization because they might make some money. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or that could get us in a I think the majority of events would be the, like, you know, at, right. the the money. on the drive through roast beef dinner or whatever. Right. <laughs> I think, it w well, that would eliminate um, the political parties that might have their chicken dinners. Um, you know, the Republican has a chicken dinner, the Democrats have some type of chicken dinner at some point. You know, those are the ones we probably could have to eliminate because we don't want to seem like we're partial. You know, I mean, to be honest. Um, I think that's good. Yeah, no political. political. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, supporting the school and supporting, you know, the churches and the firehouses and those kind of things. I, I think as a community, I think we should do that. But I, I don't think I agree with you on the political side. I don't yeah. think we should be supporting, you know, either side for that. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's a non-starter. Yeah. Right, right, right. Okay, well, the good news is, you know, because there are other signs that ha there certainly hasn't been, we get, we, we get requests for our social media, uh, but we haven't yet gotten any for our signs. And I think it's because our social media has a pretty good reach. Yeah. Um, and also, yeah. we probably would want the organizations to make their own images. Like, we don't want to be creating an image for an organization. And I don't know how many organizations have the capacity to do that. Mm -hmm. We have to do like if the FARC, we have to do both Ravine and Queeman's Fire Company. <laughs> <laughs> and the Hollow and the Baltimore. Well, but yeah, don't something. forget the and Hollow. Again, that comes back to the first come, first serve. So yeah. for this month, mm -hmm. if this company asks, you know, for this, then you know, then that's the company that gets it on there. Unfortunately, yeah, we probably do it for a week. Yeah. We okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, the yeah. Hollow has their own electronic Four sign. Per month, then. Yeah. Basically. Okay. Well, I, I think it's a great idea. All right. So let me just um, ask. So for the strategic plan, we're talking about just using the community calendar. Yeah, and so I will send you all just some talking points about that, um, so you can bring it to other groups that you are a part of. Um, can you send us instructions on how to get on ourselves? Absolutely. Yep. I can do that. Thank you. You are welcome. Thank you all. Um, did anybody else? I, I think we're, we're down to the bottom of our agenda and we're ready to adjourn unless somebody has something else they wanted to. I just need one more clarification. Sure. So for the electronic sign, we are going to offer it to community organizations. If they ask, right? We're not going to publicly put it out, right? Yeah, I would be happy to not publicize it. Yeah. <laughs> but not political organizations. Yeah, political. Right. Well, then how are groups going to know that we're able to, that we can advertise? They'll or, have to be creative and ask. Well, uh, and they'll see other groups. Right. right. Yeah, I think when one does it, then that'll... Yeah. Right. That's exactly we're right. Um, it's a small town. If <laughs> someone else sees someone advertising, they're going to think, well, maybe they'll let us advertise. Exactly. So, right. Um, are you said, Audrey? I am, thank you. Okay, so the, our next meeting is November 8th at 7. We're going to do it Zoom again. And uh, if I could uh, have a motion to adjourn, I would appreciate it. I make a motion to adjourn our meeting. Thank you. <laughs> I, I second. second.